Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And for all our new viewers, where the hell have you been? You've got to catch up on some videos. All joking aside, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Views, and welcome back, of course, to our 458. Today, we're going to talk to you about the quirks and features of the interior of the 458. First of all, I want to preface what I'm going to say downstream by saying the interior is typical supercar. It's stunning, it's beautiful in its design. And although I'm going to talk negatively in certain aspects about the interior, the overriding factor of the interior of, this, of the 458 is it's typical Ferrari supercar. It's beautiful in its styling. It's still not out of date. It's only the SF90 and the Roma and any downstreams like the 296, etc. those downstream models that have really um, substantially updated the interior. This is still um, a modern interior or, or a modern classic interior of a, of a Ferrari. So even though I'm gonna talk some negative aspects, don't take them to heart. <laughs> it, overall, it's, you know, the main overriding feature of the 458 interior is its beautiful styling and it still isn't out of date even though this styling is 12 13 years old so the leg room on a 458 and the general seating position is very good um, here we've got the carbon race seats as you as i mentioned before in my 458 buyer's guide check below if you want to look at that check out that video the carbon race seats are very much high in demand with regards to owners of these cars very much um, very much a requirement or an, a very much a priority when people are purchasing 458s these seats are stunning in their design and they actually, um, irrespective of other cars and other, other Ferraris, they actually fit you very well. Now they have, I believe there was three different sizes for these race seats um, and, they, and they support you very well around your kidneys. So if you're doing track work, say for example, this car's never been on a track, but if you do take these cars on the track, um, then they're very supportive and they're not going to allow you to roll around inside the car when you're when you're um, putting a lot of g's when you're going around corners and such like also um, as i get in the car obviously being a spider and with my knackered knees and hips from all the sports i did many years ago um, the spider makes it a lot easier for me to get into the car i'm six foot one and most of my height is in my legs that means I've got a shortish body in relation to um, in relation to my whole height of, of my whole body, of my torso and my legs. So most of my height is in my legs. That means that I need quite a bit of leg room. As you can see here, I haven't got the seat all the way back, manually adjusted on the race seats. I've got it sort of near the back, but not all the way back. And I've got well enough space. And one of the beauties of the of the seating position, or one of the one of the beauties of setting up the position in the 458, which yeah, you get it on more modern cars anyway is the, the steering wheel, I'll just put the ignition on there. The steering wheel is, is very easily height adjusted. Just excuse the, um, the dash cam there and some the usual beeps, low in fuel, etc. etc. If you own a Ferrari, all you, it's all about the beeps. So it's very easy to actually set up the, the, the driving position on this car. It's pretty cool. So you've got, a, you know, if I take the steering wheel all the way in, for example, you can see there's a substantial amount of adjustment on the steering wheel. It's quite extensive. As you can see there. And substantially, you can drop it substantially low and fairly high as well, which is a definite bonus. Now I usually have it about part way in and that gives me a good driving position with my arm slightly bent, obviously in the 10 to two position, which is common practice. So you can actually turn the steering wheel in this way when you're turning corners and you're not crossing your hands. Your hand should always be on the steering wheel. So from that point of view, it's, it's a great driving position. Then the seats are very comfortable. The seats are, are, are really hugging me around my, the side of my body, around my torso, around my kidneys. And it's a great place to be. And I've, you know, we've, we've done some fairly long trips in this car and the seats are very, very comfortable. It's great. 
and the and the general um the general quality of the car even with base spec is it's you know, very good quality hard wearing carpets um, the carbon fiber even is quite hard wearing to a degree obviously and you must make sure you don't scrape it too too aggressively but it's fairly hard wearing with a like a lacquer coating on top of the carbon fiber um, and the head height again my body uh, my height is in my legs so I've got quite a good bit of space above my head and when the roof is up I've got quite a bit of space there as well um, so it's, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good position to be, a good driving position. Obviously, when you've got the roof down, you've got very good accessibility. You've got a very good vision, very good um, sighting all around the car. Um, not everybody has a spider, of course, in the Italia. You, know, you do get limited space through the rear screen, um, but it's still pretty good visibility through the rear view mirror. And, and obviously, you've got great door mirrors on these. And on my particular car, you've got a reversing camera and you've got parking sensors. So it's pretty cool and apart from anything else it is a cool place to be it's a really cool place to be in one of these cars so um the overriding factor of of this interior it's a stunning ferrari supercar interior and it very much befits the 458 so moving on to the storage in a 458 the storage storage is actually very good and very much a feature of the 458 if, you, if we're talking about the speciali version not so good because you have nets etc and I'll, I'll give you an appreciation of where they would be sighted but on the standard 458 you've got very good locations here for trinkets and bits and pieces for your phone keys etc um, you know, it's quite, it's not massive, but it's a good area. And you've got that on both doors. So you've got it on passenger and driver's side doors. If you haven't got the stereo JBL upgrade, then in this area, because this area isn't taken up by the stereo, then you've got another little pocket here, which enables you to put, again, little things in there, maybe your mobile phone in that section and other trinkets in here, which is quite useful. Other storage areas you've got, you've got this tray here in the console. I put my mobile phone in there. Now, modern, mo modern mobile phones, iPhones, even Android phones, etc., are fairly wide, so it's not going to fit fully in there, so it'll overlap. But I find that's quite a useful slot, if you use, especially if you're using your phone for uh, GPS navigation. Now, obviously, you would normally have a proper phone holder for that, so that's quite useful for that. And you can put coins in here, etc., or even put your phone back in this section. So that is quite useful. If we now lift the seat and we look at this area behind let my son the videographer pull the seat forward on the passenger side there uh, so if you look at this section behind the seat you can see there's, there's a fair amount of room there you can put some bits and pieces in there um, typically we might put some camera equipment behind there when we're doing going to some shows or to some events like salon privé etc we might put a small soft bag behind here um, you want to make sure that whatever you put behind there when you close the seat back it's not going to mark the carbon racing seats and say even though these have quite, got quite a tough lacquer on them as it has on all the carbon you don't want to be scratching this because it does show it's quite evident so you want to make sure that you keep this um, unmarked and um, so that it looks as beautiful and, and keeps its beautiful beautiful styling beautiful look all the way forward rather than having it scraped and scratched and marked and um, so you have a fair amount of storage space there at the back um, which could be usable um, obviously it's going to throw around as you're driving a car around so you, get, so you need to really make sure it's, it's um, like a soft bag of some sort and if it's got zips make sure the zips aren't scratching on the back of the seats. Let's move on to a bit of a quirk of the 458 with regards to storage. Now on the 458 with regards to cup holders we've got these two cup holders if you can call them that. Um, this particular cup holder you're always challenged by the location of the air conditioning and the heating controls so whenever you're putting we always typically have a like a, a large coffee of some sort when we're driving so we'll pick up a, a takeaway coffee when you put it in there you've got to be so careful because these places where you pick the coffees up from they always fill them right to the top and you have to put it in as an angle to get it actually located in here now this is actually deep enough i've just got the the tracker fob in there the nav track tracker this is actually deep enough but it's it's challenged to actually get the cup in and out so every time you get the cup out you've got the likelihood of actually spilling the coffee all over the controls of the console not a great design um, if you had a, a solid cup that had a solid lid on it that had a locking mechanism for where you actually drank the drink from um, then that would be a lot better but again maybe that that item wouldn't fit in this in this challenge sized cup holder and you'd still be on the situation of having to leverage it in and because that would be slightly bigger you'd still be challenged trying to leverage it in to actually to get it underneath the the heating controls so that is a that is quite a bit of a problem and with regards to this cup holder at the back 
I really don't know what that was designed for because it's got the shape to fit the base of a cup, but it's got at, no locations, no, no locating sides at all, apart from about an inch. I mean, what good is that? <laughs> that isn't gonna hold anything in there. It's just gonna swill all over the carpet. So you're gonna end up with coffee cups all over here. So nobody of their right mind is gonna put a, a, any drink vessel in the back there. Um, even if the drink vessel is fully closed, it's gonna slop all over the place, so it's gonna fall over. So you're not gonna put it back in there again. So really you have one coffee or one drink locator in the car, one usable drink locator, and that usable drink locator is challenged by the location of the heating devices. So it's very hard to get in and out. Um, and then you're into the situation of trying to hold your drinks in between your legs and all that sort of thing, which you know isn't isn't a great approach. Now, also, if, if we get into the into the location of storage storage areas, when we talk about the 458 Speciale, it's very similar actually to the 430 Scuderia. You have nets at the back here. Ignore this cable. This lead is actually for the rear camera um, for the for the dash cam. So you actually have nets here. Um, and they're quite useful with regards to providing some storage area when on the Speciale versions. Um, so you'd actually locate some bits and pieces in the nets, very similar to the, to the door card areas. But the problem with that in those special models <laughs> is that you don't, have the lo the, you don't have the storage areas on the doors. So you have zero storage areas on the doors and you just have those little nets at the back. Uh, not very useful at all, really. <laughs> So not great. And of course on the Speciali models, you don't have a glove box because you have like a knee brace there. So here you would have a knee pad on the Speciali um, so that, you know, because the Speciali is designed predominantly for track use, it's, to, it's so that the passenger, if you have a passenger there who would be in effect working as somebody who's telling you all the different corners that are coming up and how to brake, how to accelerate, or they could be tutoring you. Um, in, how, in learning how to be a, a racing driver. And it, they would have a knee brace there, so, as you wouldn't, so the passenger, when you're braking hard, wouldn't be projected hard forward into the dash area. So that's why they don't have, um, why they don't have a glove box. Now, moving on to the glove box in the standard 458. Just wait for the beeping to finish again. <laughs> Press the OK button, get rid of the fuel, fuel concerns, or the fuel statement saying my fuel's low. The, the glove box button, you'd normally think, okay, well, what, it's round here, is it? Still finishing beeping. <laughs> I'd say the Ferraris are all about the beeps. You'd be looking for a button around here to open the glove box. No, or you think, okay, well, I'll push it in and it'll be a double latch system. So that would open. No, come all the way down here. Remember you're driving, so you might be trying to open the glove box. It's here on the right hand side, next to the lift button. So you have to press that button that initializes an actuator, so that's a switch for, to, to release an actuator, and that opens up the glove box. Again, getting, keeping on the, on the line of storage, commonly you have the multi-changer in here, which is what this is. So this is a six, six CD tray multi-changer. That takes up a substantial amount of space in the glove box. Now on the left-hand side, so you can, so you can still put bits and pieces in here, but you're constrained by where the multi-changer is. And of course, when you're closing this, you're closing it up to the multi-changer so you haven't got that amount of space to put items in. You've only got a thin slot area because you're closing it up, as I say, onto the multi-changer. Now, if you move to the left-hand side, you think, okay, I've got some space here to put some bits and pieces in, which you do, um, but this is severely challenged because you can only get little bits and pieces into the left-hand side. We've got our charger in there. Now, this can actually be removed so you have a bit more space, but really this is removable to provide access to the, the left-hand side fuse, fuse, fuse box and relays. You aren't going to want to put items in here now with this section removed because it's just going to go into the back and around by the, by the, by the fuses and relays. So that's not a very useful, useful approach to take. So you're left with this item fixed into the, into the locators on the glove box and limiting the amount of storage space you've got. Definitely a quirk. So carrying on with the location of where the glove box button is, you also have the lift button right next to the glove box button. Now the lift button is definitely a feature that you're gonna to want to operate when you're driving along. Now it's a great feature, um, but it's common practice to have, a, a, to have lift on supercars because obviously they're quite low, although the 458 actually isn't that low. So you don't really need it in the 458, but it's a nice to have. The, the button to actually um, start the lift, to induce the action of lift is right here next to the glove box button terrible location so you're driving along you look at where you're going you're stopping you think um, or you're pausing you're braking you're slowing down because there's a there's a, a sleeping policeman or there's something in the road maybe an inclination that you need to use the lift on 
So you, maybe you're holding it on the accelerator of the car and you're driving slowly forward, then you're fumbling around. You're thinking, okay, which way around is it? Which is the glove box button? Which is, which is the lift button? You end up pressing the glove box button and the glove box opens up and you're trying to close the glove box and then you press the lift button maybe, or you have to look down and you're taking your eyes off the road. Again, not a great design. The glove box button should be located up here and the lift button should be located around here or should be within your normal eyesight where you can quickly move and, and press, the, press the lift button. Uh, for the front suspension. Again, a quirk, definitely a quirk of the, of the design of the car. Now, we're going to move on to something which a lot of you, I'm sure, will follow me on. The good old steering wheel of the 458. Now, the 458 steering wheel is the first steering wheel that incorporated all this functionality, so did away with the side indicator stalk, the, the side headlight stalks, etc. It's the first steering wheel to incorporate all this functionality onto the steering wheel. Now that has its pluses and minuses. Yes, it keeps everything local to you so that you, you have easy access to these bits and pieces. Obviously you've got the Manatino there, that's a good positioning, so that's um, quite common and that's been around for quite a long time. It's been around since the 430. Um, now you've got the button here for the, for, the, um, for the windscreen wipers and the washers, very unintuitive, but in effect, you just keep pressing it that way to make it go faster and keep pulling it to de decrement it on its operations. I've gone through this previously, so I won't go this in detail. I went through this previously in, the, in, the, in my video on the, on the steering wheel of the 458, but it's not a great design um, from the point of view of the indicators, although the, the, the 488 and the F8 indicators where you have this latch over the top, which has a functional button at the top. So in effect, you can action them from the top as well. It's a lot better design. Um, definitely a quirk of the indicators is the fact that to, act, to, hold, to have it so that you um, use it so that the indicators operate for a short period of time, for a circa two, uh, one or two seconds for what they call lane change, you have to press and hold it and then you'll see the indicators flash for a short period of time. That is not intuitive. And then to have the indicators so they stay on all the time, you press it just once. Now it should be the other way around. It should be the situation where you just press it quickly and that does a lane change amount of flashes. So that does two or three flashes for a lane change. And it should be the case that, it should be the case that when you press and hold, that's when you latch the indicators on so they stay on all the time. Interestingly enough, Guess what? They changed that later on in the 488 and the F8. They changed that functionality. So it, it just showed that they knew that that was wrong. One of the other items that was changed as well is that when on the, 48, on the 458s, when you dip the headlights, you dip by pulling on the button instead of pushing. That is not intuitive. You should really push on the button to dip. And that was changed again in the later versions of the 458 and the 488 and the F8s and all downstream Ferraris, they now have it where you dip the headlights by pressing. Interestingly enough, my car actually does have that capability. So when you press on the button, it does actually um, dip the headlights. The reason being is because this is a very late build. This is a September 2015 build. This is the last segment of builds for these Ferrari 458s. And it encompassed, it, it, it took on board the new firmware that was pushed into the Specialis because the Specialis have that new firmware on there as well. So my car was very lucky. I managed to get a Ferrari that's, um, because it was built so late, they, update, they updated the firmware on the Specialis for the Specialis, both the Aperta and the uh, Coupe Speciali. And they took it across all the 458s that were being built around that time as well. So I ended up with the upgraded firmware. So pretty cool. <laughs> Definitely a good, a good feature for my car. Not so good maybe for the other 458s if you don't like that capability that you've got to pull on the button. Moving on to the horn on the steering wheel. The horn is, is located on these two buttons either side of, of the steering wheel. For me, that is actually quite low. I would normally have my hand higher up on the steering wheel. It seems, it seems a little bit uncomfortable to have it here because you're, the rest of your hand is, is caught by the back of this, this spoke part of the steering wheel. Maybe you're supposed to have it like that and then flip up like that to the horns, I don't know, but then that wouldn't feel quite right. You're supposed to have your hands up here, really. Um, so if you want to activate the horn, say somebody's pulled out in front of you or you want to warn somebody, then you can't press here, you can't press there. You've got to press right on the button. You've got to be very accurate. And of course, you're going to miss it because you're not looking where, where you are on the steering wheel, you're looking where you're going. And you have to be very specific and press it there on that particular button, otherwise you're going to miss it. It's not going to, not going to actuate the horn. On downstream cars, on the downstream models, on the later models, they put the horn back into the center part of the steering wheel where the, 
where the airbag is. They managed to faction and integrate the horn into where the airbag is. So you do the normal thing of you press the section, the center section of the steering wheel. They, they, I think they just went overboard with the 458 and thought, yeah, let's go along with what Mr. Schumacher says, shove everything on the steering wheel. And, you know, cause it looks so cool and it does look cool. It looks really cool. Um, but let's do a wave of actual um, usability and let's just make it look cool. They focused on the, on the coolness rather and the styling of the steering wheel rather than actual capability of the steering wheel now i'm not going to cover too much about the music interface i covered that off um, when i talked about the top 10 quirks and features of of the whole overall car check that video below if you haven't seen it already the music interface very very bizarre and surreal that you can play dvds on this what is it four five inch square screen on the right hand screen you can play dvds why would you possibly want to play dvds definitely a quirk of the interior of the car here we can actually we can see the speedo there and here you can see um, some some dvd footage playing this film now we're not showing you specifically what the film is because we don't want to get a copyright strike most people play music as i detailed in my crazy infotainment system video by using something called an Envry air jewel 100 or a bovi but the this is this is um, more, more um, reliable than using the Bovi. This has got the upgraded firmware in it. So the Invery Air Jewel 100 is the item you want. And it's got the advanced option on the top, which makes it um, better, which makes it more stable and provides better operability with iPhones, with the Apple interface. Keeping with the steering wheel, one of the great features of the 458, which started on the 430 Scuderia, this is the 430 Scuderia, was the first car that had the implementation of bumpy road mode very corny in its sounding but a great feature you'd never think that the suspension of a supercar would be able to be pliable um, for for roads uh, for, for UK roads and Italian roads aren't that great apparently as well the press of this button bumpy road mode gives you that great flexibility and delatches the suspension system from the Manatino now the Manatino when you've got it when you've got it in wet mode it automatically has bumpy road mode switched on when you've got it in sport mode race um, ct off etc then those those different options would have harsher suspension but if you go into up to race mode you can still switch in bumpy road mode so you can decouple the suspension from the manatino and you can put bumpy road mode on and when you press bumpy road mode it shows you in the screen display that bumpy road mode is actuated definitely a great feature bumpy road mode bumpy road mode on a on a Ferrari supercar so moving on to some of the items which are optional and some and these items um, have been spec'd on this particular car um, we've got higher motion low emissions which is <laughs> which is actually start stop um, so this car's actually got start stop crazy isn't it a supercar will have start stop but it does and the, and downstream cars have it as well thankfully on this car you can actually switch start stop on and off now you do that Where's the button for start stop? Nowhere here where you'd think it'd be on the front part of the console. To switch start stop off, you've got the button up here. So you actually use this button, it switches start stop control off or high motion low emission. What a crazy name for it as well. High motion low, low emissions. That's a quirk in itself, just calling it that. Now this car's also got parking sensors and, of, and that is, is obviously an option as well. This has got front and rear parking sensors. To switch the parking sensors off, you can only switch the front parking sensors off. Obviously the rear parking sensors will only be actually actuated when you've got it in reverse. So when you've got it in reverse or when you're driving forwards, the front parking sensors will also be switched on or will be switched on when you're driving forwards. And they beep incessantly at you, does my head in especially when I'm in the garage. So the garage is in constant close proximity when you, when you start it up to move out of the garage. It could beep, 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 beep all the friggin' time. <laughs> the first thing I do when I start the car up in the garage is switch the front parking sensors off because otherwise it's incessant. You're, you know, you have the death of a thousand beeps with a Ferrari. I don't know why, but it just is. And they're, they're very incessant beeping, you know, it really gets on your, on your mind. So the way you switch the parking sensors off on the uh, the front parking sensors off is here so that's the first button you come to know and love is to switch the parking sensors on and off i believe the central locking button is also up here on the on this ceiling section of or the roof section of the 458 um, and also you've got two little lights there as well which um, you've got the buttons for those lights as well but that's that's good functionality and good capability it's just the location of where the start stop button is for high emotion low emissions 
and the location to switch on and off or to switch off really the parkings the front parking sensors um, crazy you've also got a, a, a tow decoupling button there which prevents the the car from complaining uh, if you have to lift the front of the car up when it's on tow so you, you you have a button there to switch that off on the electronics so that this car doesn't get funny about being lifted on the front to be towed so moving on to the air conditioning the air conditioning has a mind of its own <laughs> i highlighted this a little bit in the top 10 quirks and features video but if i switch unfortunately you're going to hear all the beeps again i apologize for that but it's, it's a death of a thousand beeps when you and um, yeah the dash cam um you know talks to you as well so dash cam obviously is is an item that i fitted i have actually found out how to switch the flipping air con off again death of a thousand beeps the way you switch the air con off is you make sure that it's not on auto and you turn the speed button all the way down. If you've got the speed button up in any way, shape or form, then the heating controls, the air conditioning comes on. Again, to switch it, to have the air conditioning on, the air conditioning is quite useful when you're even in cool weather because the cool air does help to, to defrost the screen, etc. So as you can see here, now that I've turned the fan up from zero, it has actually switched on it does switch the device on so if you want to switch the air conditioning and heating unit off just switch the fan motor fit, switch the fan speed all the way down to zero and that switches the whole unit off crazy you'd think you'd have an on off button but no ferrari don't do things like that so if you switch it on you've got this capability of having auto mode on but when i switch the auto mode on on a driver's seat you're supposed to have multi-zoning which you do have multi-zoning but unfortunately it switched the, the the auto mode on on the passenger side as well and if i switch the passenger side off it doesn't switch off you have to switch the auto mode off or you can't switch the auto mode off there on the on the driver's side either you have to actually switch off the air conditioning mode then it switches off the auto mode and you switch the auto mode on the passenger side it switches the driver's side on as well how bizarre it's just a crazy setup just just not it's not logical at all in any way shape or form in how it functions very very bizarre and the other aspect as well which is a, a bit of a negative feature if you like is that this poor materials you can spec everything else out in leather and carbon fiber but the heating air conditioning controls is plastic. It's this plastic and it's, it's like that, I believe in the 488 and the F8 as well. Why would you do that? It's a Ferrari, it's a supercar. That's an inferior material. It's well known amongst owners of these types of cars that that is a bugbear, that that is an inferior material in plastic. But again, quirk of the 458, quirk of Ferrari supercars. The interiors of a Ferrari are, as I mentioned at the very beginning in my preface, very luxurious and and very high end even on, on even on a base spec you can look at other manufacturers other supercar manufacturers such as lamborghini and you know i would say that an interior of a ferrari is is in general far superior to a lamborghini interior or audi interior i'm sure i'll get flailed alive in the comments for that but um it's it's my perception and i think many other would many others would share that perception as well one of the cool items that you can option on the 458 is cruise control now they call it pit speed again a cool name to lend on to the to the to the um, limitation of speed while you're in in the pits when a when a formula one team or when a formula one driver is in the pits area to limit their speed to a certain speed limit here cruise control is actuated from this from this button now how you actuate it is you press it in and you hold it for a few seconds until it comes up cruise control on and you get a little green LED or green light, green emblem, um, emoji icon, whatever you like to call it, on the right-hand side of the dashboard. Now, to operate this, you move the, you've got a spring release on this button to move it to the right and left, hold it to the right, and that increases your speed as you're driving, hold it to the left, it decreases your speeding. And if you press the, the brake, then it delatches the cruise control, but the cruise control stays on. And um, you can action it again by either pressing the button in once um, or by moving it right or left, and that would reaction the cruise control. Obviously, your, your throttle control would override the cruise control, and you switch it off by just holding it down again until the cruise control switches off. Very easy to operate and very useful. To, to retrofit that is £1,500 at most dealers. 15, I believe it's £1,500 plus VAT, and that's GBP. Crazy, crazy amount. 
It's just a small area of functionality. One of the bizarre quirks that if you have that retrofitted, you can't really do it yourself. Even if you purchase this item, I'm sure the wiring's already there behind in the dashboard area, but you can't retrofit it yourself. Why? Well, because you need an activation code from Ferrari. You have to put an activation code in, which then tells the ECU that the system now has pit speed installed and so it enables that functionality otherwise the functionality wouldn't work so really you've got to get a dealership to install it to, to, so that they can speak to Ferrari and get that activation code definitely a quirk and moving on now to the last item that we're going to talk about and the quirks and features of the interior we can't talk about the interior without talking about this wonderful rear screen at the moment it's acting as a wind deflector because we've got the roof down to to assist and to make it a lot easier to record this video this is a great device not only does it act as a wind deflector as i talked before in the top 10 quirks and features um, but it also um, when you've got the roof up you can you can have this rear screen at any level at any position up or down um, and any intermediary position that you set it to on the controls and it enables you to listen to the engine when you've got inclement weather. So it increases um, the, the, oral sound, the oral sound in the cabin of the car um, when you're driving and you've got inclement weather, whether it be too windy or too wet, raining, etc. You can then listen to the engine and you're not going to get inclement weather coming in, necessarily coming into the cabin. And as I say, when the roof's down, it acts as a wind deflector and a very useful wind deflector as well. So that's a great feature. The rear screen on the 458, really cool. So we're gonna close out the video now. We've gone through most of the quirks and features of the interior of the 458. If you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Um, it's very important for the channel. We're, we're, we're getting reduction in light here now. So we've got the outside light that's come on. So it's, it's uh, given a nice, it's given a nice end to the, to the video and, and shown some light on the contours of the 458. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. Some great content to come. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and we're gonna catch you in the next video.